at night when the dark gets so thick that you can't see where the floors end and ceilings begin when the pattern on the floor matches the squiggling worms behind your eyelids your sense of hearing makes up for the sound you've lost everything is this much louder deeper sense of near and far echolocation from the crickets outside my window i can tell i'm on the fourth floor the cracks and pops when i roll my ankle in the pain of loss it's your senses in past memories that make up for the numbness you feel in the present when you can't hear the radio playing right next to you it's because you hear only the sound of her voice hoarse after three weekends of weddings the smell of his coat hung in the hall closet and still damp from a sudden september storm the touch the smell the taste of things that were the life that was this was the touch of her hair curled around my fingertips jet black slippery in the space between my thumb and rim finger you love to let me tug it to let me test its strength to see if it was tethered to your head as tightly as it was to mine i remember laying my own head on your shoulder imagining us floating up into your sky our hair weaved together as a sail to catch the wind that would sweep us up out of your bedroom this was the scent of your hair still damp from the shower steaming and smelling like a hot cup of chai i remember walking in branch brook park to see the cherry blossoms the april wind pushing the last traces of winter and your curls into my face tickling my nostrils father was wrong when he would say that your hair always smelled like the cheap oils on the counter of the indian market of the parkway this was the map the strands of your hair made on the passenger seat i could trace my little finger through the tangled rivers and black trails up the upholstery i remember balling up these threads to toss like tumbleweeds onto the turn bike as we passed exit 7 on your way to work i hoped that we would be like hansel and gretel following the long lines of intertwined hairs all the way home this was the sight of matted hair in the shower drain when you first got sick i thought it was my own they had talked about puberty in school about how we were all butterflies waiting to emerge from our chrysalis I thought I was going to grow a new head of hair hair that would be even more strong and as beautiful as yours Daddy had to explain why you were spending the night in the hospital and why I was never going to be a butterfly This was the sound of your new vocabulary words like remission and metastasized that could never replace the words of songs you sang the words of your stories 
that I had written to memory. The history of your locket, the protection of your mother's hair. The sound of your voice was no longer a sensation when you whispered through my hair. It was just another thing I would lose. This was the promise that I would still feel you in your absence, that I would still catch the scent of your passing, hear your voice in my ear, see the forest of your hair. This was the pain of losing you. More than my memories, the only thing I wanted most was to be wrapped in your curls again, to feel those gossamer strands, to breathe in those lingering spices, to steal your warmth. This is my shattered sense of who you are, scattered through a different continent by other relatives' hands kept in stories poured from other friends' lips and impossibly bound into your cold metal locket. But always weaved into my hair.